To stand up tall and proud, I want you to speak up clear and loud, bright. In a world overrun with the fake, delusional, and disingenuous, he stands as a beacon of truth. He is Abuki Cabal. Listening to Abuki Cabal. Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thought I'd share some, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, some of the local situation that's going on around uh, around me. Um, things have been kind of on a roller coaster here, uh, ever since actually last week, uh, it started to pick up, uh, around about the same time as around 2020 and around, uh, 2021. So now, uh, here we are in 2022 again, uh, around January, uh, December, January time, uh, we start to, uh, to, uh, pick up the pace. Um, as of Monday, uh, in Arkansas, uh, broke a record uh, for the highest COVID cases since the beginning of the pandemic. And that was at, that was 4,978 cases, almost 5,000 cases. That was Monday. Today, it's like 7,000. Three days. Now, you want to know what the numbers were when we closed it down? In 2020, just above 2,000 cases. So the situation hasn't gotten any better. Um, the attitudes haven't gotten any better. We're still seeing some of the same situations around. People are just wearing anything that they, you know, can find as a face covering. Uh, for the most part, ignoring um, any direction, um, from the CDC, um, the health department, uh, local news, um, the hospitals, um, health departments, you know, all of that's, uh, being deemed, um, irrelevant, uh, by a certain sector of the population. Uh, they just don't, they just don't believe it. And, um, like I said, I've got family members that are on that same line. I mean, they're thinking that they can just, you know, do local, you know, cures and, you know, stuff they would take for a cold, stuff they would take for, you know, for the flu. Um, you know, you still have people out here saying it's just a, you know, another version of the flu. You know, you got all kinds of things out here. You know, I got folks in the comments section to say, you know, that I'm, 
I'm ignoring, you know, uh, credible medical specialists on, uh, on, uh, virology and whatnot. And, you know, saying that because I'm not a doctor, you know, I guess I'm not, you know, um, qualified to, uh, to, uh, present some of this information. I'll leave that up to you guys. I'll leave that up to you guys. If you give me, if, if you find anything that is questionable with anything that I present, you are more than welcome. You know, hit me up in the comments. If I, if I mention something that is, is, is not uh, credible, uh, I am more than willing to, uh, to, to say that I was wrong about something or that I, um, um, am not unaware of something. So I will be digging into a little bit of that. Uh, after I uh, knock off some of this, but um, more likely than not, it's usually uh, that folks just don't, they, they want to uh, listen to information that um, toes the line instead of uh, the line that they wanted to hear to um, instead of the scientific line, you know, the line that's been established for you know, hundreds of years, uh, as far as going where the data leads you, uh, people are, you know, accusing, uh, the medical establishment of moving the goalposts. Uh, but that, that, that's not how that works. If the information changes, you deliver the information as it changes. Information will change over time. That doesn't mean that the information that you gave initially wasn't true. at the time that you gave it or that it isn't a piece of a larger truth, you know, but, uh, everybody's looking for this to be, um, cow manure. And, uh, it's just not, you know, it's not, I don't know. How, I don't know what needs to take place in order for people to part, to start saying, okay, maybe I need to, you know, maybe I need to start, uh, you know, backtracking a little bit. But I don't want to I don't want to go too long on a diatribe about this. I'm just going to go ahead and, and dig into it. Like uh, this is is uh, uh, what I set up for uh, for Tuesday and I was going to give it last night, but did another show when I was I, w I was pretty tired. So it's kind of hard, you know, working and then coming in here and trying to uh, to crank that out. Uh, I apologize. I will um, will we'll try to uh, to get out a, a lot more. I've got so much stuff, you know, sitting back uh, for me to you know, get at that. I think you guys are going to, going to enjoy. Um, let's start with the first one. Okay. 2021 is ending with the spike in COVID-19 cases. Arkansas is now above 20,000, the 20,000 mark in known active cases for the first time since early September. Okay. And it gives a graph, the graph down here at the bottom and it's showing how, um, you know, the uptick in the, the, uh, the cases, uh, and infections um, kind of peaked in, in, in troughs there. Uh, and it also the, another story that was developing, uh, they were talking about the Arkansas Direct, uh, uh, Department of Corrections uh, is basically um, uh, um, concerned about the increasing number of inmates and um, correctional uh, guards that are uh, being infected with, uh, with COVID. So it says because of the rising number of COVID-19 cases among staff and state prisoners, the Arkansas Department of Corrections announced Friday it is prohibiting visitation and limiting non-essential movement within and between facilities until January the 14th. OK, and that was last week. OK. OK. And here Monday we had uh, Governor Hutchinson announced on Friday uh, well, actually that was Friday. Sorry. <laughs> I meant to get to it on Monday. So, um, sorry. Uh, governor Hutchinson announced on Friday that COVID-19 numbers rose by nearly 5,000, making it the highest single day increase for the state of Arkansas since the beginning of the pandemic. Okay. All right. Well, that was Friday. Okay. So there are numbers 400, I mean, 4,978 cases there. Okay. Let's read this other article here. Well, 
we'll just go to the other. Okay, this is what's going on today. And this is uh, Wednesday, um, close to midnight. Okay, 7,488 cases of COVID-19 in Arkansas have been added in today's update and 9,136 additional doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered. Okay, and that's, um, you know, the um, Arkansas Department of Health's uh, website there. You can go there and you can look at, uh, at uh, the other data that was released. Uh, and it also uh, on Twitter gives a, uh, a daily breakdown of, of what the numbers were, um, you know, last week up into uh, today. OK, now in, in the in the Gazette, uh, the story is. You now that uh, it was breaking uh, that Arkansas County, uh, Arkansas's count of coronavirus cases rose Wednesday by almost seven thousand five hundred, setting a new record for the single day increase for the second consecutive day over the past seven days, an average of 4,439 Arkansans per day have been diagnosed with COVID-19. And that's a lot for, for a little bitty state, you know, like Arkansas. So, and it goes on to say that Governor uh, uh, Hutchinson authorized over 60 Arkansas National Guard to help speed up coronavirus testing as the state's count of cases rose more than 6,500, blowing past the record set less than a week earlier for the most new cases in a single day. Okay. So we've been getting hit pretty hard, you know, and I, I don't know if you guys, you know, I've, I've talked about this in the past, but these are the setups that, that, um, you know, they're wearing and, and, uh, some of the, you know, the bigger hospitals, uh, if you can get this, this gear, um, if you can't, you know, you have a little, little less sophisticated setup, still protects you nonetheless, but this is a whole lot better. Um, and that's only part of it, but the head apparatus there, you know, uh, it has, it's, uh, a, a, that a tube that basically goes up into the head. Uh, it ventilates the face and, um, keeps you from fogging up and everything keeps you with, uh, with fresh filtered air so that you're not breathing uh, contaminated air from the outside. You have a tube that goes down here into a, uh, like a mini um, filtration and air conditioning unit uh, that keeps you cool. You also wear a drape uh, system and uh, you double glove there to make sure that you are not, you know, contaminated with any kind of fluids and, and whatnot. So uh, it's pretty good, uh, good setup. Um, if I was that person, I'd still be wearing a mask underneath that. Um, but doesn't look like, uh, she's, uh, taking that measure, but let's move on. Let's look at the, uh, the story here. All righty. So there is Arkansas single day increase of 7,488 COVID cases sets another record. Okay. Okay. Arkansas's count of coronavirus case coronavirus cases rose Wednesday by almost 7,500, setting a new record for a single day increase for the second consecutive day. The number of people hospitalized in the state with COVID-19 jumped by 44 to 819, its highest level in more than three months. It was the sixth consecutive day of double digit increases in coronavirus hospitalizations. The state's death toll from the pandemic is tracked by the Arkansas Department of Health and it rose by eight to 9,256. Okay, the 7,488 cases added Wednesday came just a day after the state's count rose by 6,000. 562. The three biggest daily increases in new case increases in new cases have all happened within the past week. Before Thursday, additional Thursday's addition of 4,978 cases, the biggest daily increase since the start of the pandemic, 
was a spike of 4,304 cases on January the 1st. At a record level since Sunday, the average day daily increase in the state's case count over a rolling seven-day period, rose Wednesday to 4,439. With new cases continuing to outpace recoveries, the deaths, the number of cases in the state that were considered active reached an all-time high for the second day in a row. Active cases number uh, 38,154, an increase of 5,874. The number of the state's virus patients who were on ventilators rose by 10 to 128, its highest level since October the 19th. The number who were in intensive care rose by 8 to 257, its highest level since October the 11th. More details in Tuesday's Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Okay, so it's a little short short uh, piece uh, from a paper there. And, um, you know, this increase, uh, this, you know, trip increase since last week, you know, you guys know uh, Christmas uh, just just passed. And uh, we had a, a, you know, a pretty big, you know, Christmas get together here and a bunch of people went. Uh, a lot of um a lot of uh, prestigious people, a lot of local people, a lot of people just went and, and uh, went to this this event. And um, the event is pretty much uh, uh, considered a, a super spreader. Um, a lot of people who went to the event have come down with COVID. A lot of people were not wearing masks. Um, a lot of people are still going out, you know, getting gas, um, shopping uh, and uh, just not doing what they're uh, what they're asked to do, not to mention uh, people are, are, are still um, trying to get in and see patients in you know, in the hospitals and, and other facilities um, and putting themselves at risk or either bringing um, uh, COVID into the facility. We're starting to see. Uh, I can't remember what the what the the, the number of, of Omicron, uh, uh, the percentage of Omicron that we, we have in the state now, but it, it's a significant percentage. Uh, and it has, uh, it's made its way across the nation pretty quickly. Um, so, um, it is taxing the system. You have a lot of nurses who are, um, definitely overburdened. A lot of doctors also, um, uh, the the system uh, is not going to be able to weather this for very long. Like I said, this is this is is um, two three times what it was last time. Well, the last two times. So um, just keep that in mind. You know, hopefully everybody's you know being safe. Um, the information is out there. You don't have to believe me. Just go look for it. You know, look for the information. Don't look for the information to you know, to counter what you, what you don't want to believe, you know, look for the information for what it is, you know? And, uh, that's all I ask. All I can do is present it, the information, you know, I, I can't, you know, sway you one way or the other, but, you know, I will, um, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and I'll read, read this, this, um, this piece, um, that I was I, I was reading uh, here. I think you guys may find this uh, pretty interesting. And this is by an ER nurse um, that uh, had uh, you know mixed feelings on a COVID positive anti vax patient. And uh, this this pretty much is is a, a um, pretty general sentiment. You know, a large sentiment. I mean, I wouldn't say yeah. I'll say it's a pretty large sentiment of 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 those. Uh, uh, medical personnel who have worked through um, this, you know, with the ups and downs, you know, the, the staffing shortages, people being rude, uh, acting like we're, you know, we're running around infecting them and, 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 and experimenting on them and all kinds of stuff. All of this stuff that people are out here just saying that uh, is putting people like me in danger, putting people like, uh, like physicians that I know in danger, 
you know, uh, ancillary staff in danger. These people um, are different. I mean, this is a whole different environment. But I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Uh, and, and you guys tell me what you think in the uh, in the comments. OK, I'm an ER nurse that came from a year in the COVID ICU. I'm upset by anti-vax propaganda as much as the rest of us. And normally I'm a reap what you sow kind of person in this regard. However, today I felt something I haven't felt in a long time. Sympathy. I had a 50 something year old smoker, COPD patient. Come in today by ambulance, COVID positive, O2 sats of 68%. Okay. And that's on room air. Okay. Your sats are not supposed to uh, uh, get below 90% for you to um, sustain your yourself, you know, and your tissues. Uh, so Let's move on. Okay. The patient uh, was originally COVID positive on 1227 and spent a couple of days in the hospital to be discharged home. Patient never required oxygen in the hospital. When asked, he told me he was not vaccinated because his family and friends told him he shouldn't get it. When he was here last week, he was offered remdesivir and declined, declined it saying that he was, uh, he saw some stuff online that made him not want it. Sorry, this glare is killing me, y'all. Uh, a very nice person, uh, all pleasers and thank yous, uh, but set in his ways. Well, today I put him on 10 liters when he came in. So it looks like he came in a, a couple couple of other times having difficulty and um, looks like he didn't get over his initial uh, COVID symptoms. OK, so uh, the remdesivir, if you don't know what that is, remdesivir is an antiviral uh, that we use, uh, you know, um, for, you know, the flu. And things like that. Um, so they've been using it for COVID also to try to mitigate some of the symptoms, uh, to try to help people who are in, in, in uh, having a bad way uh, to try to get over it. Um, so um, let's move on here. OK, he was on 10 liters when he came in and then we moved him up to 15 and he just couldn't keep his sats above 90. So I bumped him up to a non rebreather. OK, a non rebreather mask is what we put you on so that you can sustain. Uh, you can. Yeah, you can. You can weather, you know, higher levels of oxygen uh, without getting so much that you'll start to decompensate, you know, because you have to keep a balance between CO2 and oxygen in order for your, you know, your body uh, to be able to uh, to operate. Um, The way it's supposed to your diaphragm will not operate if there is not a uh, a certain level of O2 and a certain level, level of CO2 in order for, you know, that mechanism uh, of respiration to uh, to occur. OK, so um, bumped him up to the non rebreather when he was still struggling. We put him on a heated high flow. Uh, OK, so that's uh, humidification, humidified oxygen. Uh, high flow uh, um, set up at 95 percent, O2 and 60 at 60 liters. That's a lot, y'all. That is a lot. OK, he was finally maintaining uh, a sat at 92 percent, but barely. He couldn't even eat dinner without needing to get pumped up or get bumped up to 70 liters. OK, the doctor went uh, went in to talk to him and told him that uh, BiPAP was probably our best bet uh, and we would hope that that worked. Later, the patient asked me, what if the BiPAP doesn't work? What then? I explained to him that intubation would be next. Uh, it's, OK, so it says, but we'll see about the BiPAP first. He continued and asked, what if the intubation doesn't work? 
what then? Okay, so let me explain this process. So, okay, the BiPAP, I don't know if you've ever seen a CPAP set up, but uh, a CPAP is is a one function uh, a system. Uh, the BiPAP uh, is more of a passive system. It gives you, uh, um, it helps you to, to, uh, to breathe with a little bit less resistance. Um, so it's a little bit easier on you. Um, they've got other systems, no need to go into that. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's a little short of, uh, a ventilator. Okay. The ventilator is a little bit, you know, more powerful system. They have to intubate you for that which we have to basically put a tube in through your airway. And then we have to, uh, to give you propofol have to, uh, to sedate you in order for you to not reject the system in order for the system to breathe for you. So that, that, that propofol will basically paralyze you in order for you to not fight against that system and allow you to basically breathe uh, the machine to breathe for you and to oxygenate, you know, you, uh, enough for you to, uh, recover and um, come off the system if you get strong enough to come off the system. 80% chance you don't. Okay. Um, here we go here. So she says, uh, I calmly told him we're going to do everything we can to get him better. He then said, so basically, you're just going to keep me on oxygen and hope for the best. And I slowly responded that yes. That was the plan. He then asked, why can't I just get an antibiotic? We get this all the time. Trust me. We get this all the time. I've, I've had the same question ever since when I worked, when I worked pediatrics, you know, they, people think antibiotics and Tylenol is the, the, the miracle cure, you know, and it's like, uh, antibiotics do nothing for viruses, nothing, nothing at all. Bacterial infections, you know, things like that. Yes. Antibiotics will, will work for that, but not a virus. OK, so here you, you see people have a fundamental misunderstanding of what medicine does. OK, OK, so here we go. And I had to explain to him antibiotics don't have any effect on a virus. You could see it slowly setting in that he was in trouble. He said that he should have gotten the vac uh, gotten vaccinated and that he wished he said yes to the remdesivir last week because he doesn't qualify for it now. And the reason why he doesn't qualify, because it, you know, he's so far, far gone at that point that it's probably not going to have an effect. So um, couldn't justify doing it. OK, so uh, he told me about his 25 year old daughter that's supposed to be getting married uh, in the spring and how he doesn't think he'll make it. He was on the verge of tears. Most anti-vaxxers tend to be really mean or know-it-alls. So this guy threw me off that he was none of, the, none of that. He was simply a guy that was grossly misinformed and uneducated. He was a victim of the media that he saw online and on TV. He wished he made different choices, but was realizing it was too late. He's scared. He should be. I feel really bad for him and others like him. They all they are all just victims of misinformation spread in the media. It's awful. Okay. As the edit down here, also wanted to mention that after two years of feeling literally nothing but anger, stress, depression and frustration, feeling like these patients deserve what they get. This is weird. When I was in the room talking to him about his daughter's wedding, I started to tear up and I realized I was feeling sad for him. I literally had to sit there and process the strange sensation of feeling empathy and compassion for someone again. What the fuck has this pandemic done to me? And I add, what the fuck has this pandemic done to us? Everybody's so busy fighting, you know, that we're not putting the effort where it should be. 
and I could I could read this whole thread, you know. If you guys want me to, I will. I'll, I'll go over some of some of what the other RNs and, and and this 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 thread that I'm in. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a part of this too. You know, these are emergency department doctors, ICU doctors, nurses. We all come in here and we all talk about what we've seen and what we've had, what we have to 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 deal with. Okay, and um. This is a place where people are, you know, basically coming to try to vent and to try to, you know, not not lose it themselves after seeing so much death and and waste as a result of people being misled about this whole situation. You know, and in the end, you know, people, some people are just never going to get it. But we know for a fact that some people are dying needlessly. And, you know, some of you guys have the luxury and girls have the luxury uh, and women, <laughs> you know, men, you know, uh, you may have the luxury of sitting out there and, and saying, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm not going to believe this. I'm not going to believe that. I'm going to go and, and watch Joe Rogan and all that. But I can, I can guarantee you that if Joe Rogan gets sick, he's going to go see the right people to try to get him taken care of. You know, he may tell you anything. But, uh, you know, you do what's best, you know, for you, you know, or you'll find yourself in the same situation as this, as this, this, this gentleman here. Now, uh, uh, granted, he had a lot going on. You know, he had COPD, he was a smoker, all that stuff. Yeah. But I've seen people come in with, with, with not, none of that and wind up in the same situation. You know, and I'm back, I'm back working with COVID patients right now. Lost another one last week. That's my 26th one. So uh, it's not a fun thing to watch. It's not a fun thing to to take care of, enough, uh, you know, uh, or or um, something that I take lightly, you know, so you may not understand, you know, why I um, I take the position that I take. Um, but I don't take my position lightly and I do not, uh, waste my time, uh, not, um, trying to learn about every aspect of this, this disease and how I can help people. Okay. And that's even the stuff that, that you guys think that, uh, works that doesn't work. I, I look into that too. So I look into everything. So, um, I'll continue to try to keep you guys up on this. I hope you guys like this one. Um, hopefully it didn't go too long. Hopefully it was, it was informative. Um, wow. Yeah. This one, this one kind of tugged on me a little bit. Um, I, uh, I appreciate you guys coming and hanging out with me. Um, uh, you know, checking out the information. Um, hopefully we can all, you know, get to where, we want to be and that's um out of this mess you know uh but it's not just us it's all over the world it's all over the place and then we got another one cropping up overseas right now another variant but you guys stay safe you know keep yourself safe your family safe and your community safe i appreciate you guys hanging out with me you are listening to abuki cabal the analytical savage